Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are about to start right now. Uh, we hope uh, you and your dear ones are doing well and finding strength in these difficult times. My name is Nitin Keser, and I'm the manager for communications at the Alliance for an Energy Efficient Economy. Before we start today's proceedings, I would like to share a few housekeeping guidelines. All the attendees have been kept on mute to ensure we are able to hear the speakers clearly. This session is being recorded. You can see the session recording on our YouTube channel post the event. We will share the link to download the report with everyone post the session. You can share your questions in chat box, which we'll address in the open floor session. If we are unable to respond to your questions or queries during this session, we would address them through email. Now, uh, I would like to take a moment to introduce our speakers for today's session. The opening remarks uh, of today's session will be presented by Mr. Upendra Bhatt, who is the chairperson at AEEE, Alliance for Energy Efficient Economy. We will then have a short presentation by Dr. Bhaskar Natarajan, who will take us through the key inputs in the report. Thereafter, we will have uh, special remarks from Melanie Slade from International Ed Energy Agency and Dr. Winfred Dam from GIZ. Post the special remarks by the dignitaries from IEA and GIZ, Secretary Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Mr. R.K. Rai, will formally release the report and we will have a brief discussion of 15 minutes. At the end of the session, we will have an open floor in which we would, in which we would address any questions posed to our speakers. Now, um, I would request uh, Mr. Upendra Bhatt uh, to come on the, and start your, your session. Over to you, Mr. Upendra. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, am I audible, guys? Yeah. So thank yeah. you so much, uh, Nitin, for kickstarting uh, everyone on this session. Um, I would echo Nitin's welcoming remarks, but more importantly, reiterating the need to be safe in these very, very challenging times. Many of us are grappling with this, so it can't be closer than what we have been seeing. Uh, but uh, having said so, I think uh, just as these challenges are presenting um, requirements of innovation and uh, forcing people to think differently, I think uh, we are similarly seeing energy transition play out in very, very different forms and shape. So it's very, very opportune for AEEE to have worked on this uh, particular initiative, almost a landmark study in uh, synthesizing all the energy uh, efficiency action in the country, focus on ministerial action, trying to cover different facets of the E uh, dimension, the roles of the DFIs, etc. But I think what is important really for all of us to recognize and more critically support is that this is as good as all of us kind of supporting this initiative because data of any kind would only make sense if everyone contributes to it and builds off it. And so I'm hoping and requesting everyone present to spread the word on this. Uh, Abhaskar and his team uh, would continue to engage all of you over the next several months. This is you know, being visualized uh, in similar way as the E state index that IEEE has now been working on with B uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency for almost three years. So we do hope that this uh, would become an annual state of sector in its own meaning. Uh, it would end up touching upon different facets, including private sector. I think this being the first initiative has consciously tried to build the, you know, the baseline on this in context of the form and shape in which the sector is evolving. But I think going forward in the next edition, I'm given to understand there's a significant uh, learning that people have picked up on the market and more critically the demand side which will get covered and i think that is how this will become a i would say a, a two-way street and how you know make it relevant for all the stakeholders so quite excited about this uh, keen to read the report i haven't had a chance to do so with all the craziness that is around and so we will certainly welcome mr rai's uh, presence and support in releasing the report but more critically thanking him and the Bureau of Energy Efficiency for the partnership that they've always kind of uh, bestowed on AEEE. We are quite uh, pleased with that as industry members. 
I do have a day job uh, outside of AEEE's role that Nathan talked about. So I think on behalf of the industry members as well, I do feel that the AEEE and Bureau of Energy Efficiency Partnership, uh, we are looking with uh, you know deep interest in furthering that, and we are hoping that the industry will uh, use AEEE's platform to engage uh, in more proactive, innovative action. And uh, those are some of the facets I'm hoping, Bhaskar, your team covers as you take the next uh, few sessions, uh, editions of this particular report. So thank you for that. Uh, welcome everyone once again to this very exciting session. I'm really keen to hear all of you and thank all the supporters and proponents of AEEE's work in this area and uh, look forward to the commentary from several of the uh, panelists today. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Mr. Upendra. I mean, like what you said, I mean, like how this sets the baseline for the sector and how it is evolving is a very, very important. I mean, like this report sets the context for that. Uh, thank you for your opening remarks. Now, uh, I would request uh, Dr. Bhaskar Natarajan to present a small presentation which will uh, run us through the whole report. So uh, over to you, Dr. Bhaskar. I'll be putting up the slide deck so that you can just request me when you want to move to the next slide. Okay. Thank you. Let's start now. Yes. Yes. Go to the, yeah. Thank you. Let's uh, go to the first slide. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pindra, for your uh, remarks. Uh, at the opening. AEEE has been working on this report, which is a very comprehensive report that puts together a lot of information that is available on energy efficiency across various agencies. As all of us are aware, we have a number of publications that provide data on supply side for different energy sources, conventional and renewable. But no such single report is available for energy efficiency, with the exception of the annual report of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and ESL. While there are many agencies within the government that are doing work on energy efficiency, and at the same time, we have a number of national and international agencies working on energy efficiency. Thus, AEEE felt that there was a need for such a comprehensive report and therefore, this report that has been over a year in making, titled India's Energy Efficiency Landscape, a compilation of policies, priorities, and potential is now being launched today. Next slide, please. For AEEE, who focuses on data and information on energy efficiency, this report is a kind of a journey to bring in as much information in energy efficiency as is available in public domain. If stakeholders wish to share information that is not in public domain, but wish to hide certain confidential matters, AEEE would be more than happy to work with stakeholders to put such information also into this report and therefore seeks the cooperation of all stakeholders in making this annual publication of AEEE, an important and relevant document on energy efficiency. The next slide, Nitin. As I mentioned before, this is a comprehensive consolidated document where we have put together not only information from the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and ESL, but also other important ministries, such as the ministry running the FAME program, you have other important ministries such as MNRE and others who are also doing work, as well as the international agencies, which include the World Bank, Asian Development Bank, UNIDO, the FCDO, and many such agencies, more of which are covered in the subsequent slides in the report. Next slide. The report tries to address by collecting information from all public sources 
on a number of questions that all of us have been asking in terms of the potential for saving energy. There are different reports that talk about different levels of potentials. And this is primarily linked to the assumptions that each report makes on the potential for energy savings in the country. There are a range of policies that are being implemented by the official agencies and the international agencies and national agencies partner with the official agencies in implementing these policies. India has made certain commitments to climate change and India is seeking financing opportunities for implementing the commitment to climate change. Next slide. The three big programs, as far as India is concerned, are the National Action Plan on Climate Change, where we have made certain commitments for reductions in emissions intensity. The National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, which has resulted in enormous amount of savings, valued at over 100,000 crores. And then we have the National Mission on Sustainable Habitat. This is not to say that there are no other important missions, and there are several other missions that are also there, which are covered in detail in this report. Next slide. This graphic sets out the key ministries that are working on energy efficiency. We have the government of India that talks of national targets and policy objectives. We have the Niti Aayog that serves as a think tank providing coordination and other support across all ministries. And we have the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation that carries out enormous amount of data work, surveys and related activities to put out information in public domain on a range of subjects. What we must remember is that energy efficiency is cross cutting. And every ministry, whether it is the Ministry of Coal, Science and Technology, Petroleum and Natural Gas, all have certain activities that they are undertaking on energy efficiency. And this report tries to cover these cross-cutting activities that are undertaken by various ministries within the government and in partnership with national and international agencies. The next slide. This is a very well-known slide from the annual report of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. I will not go into it in too much detail. Suffice to say that there are a large number of programs that the Bureau of Energy Efficiency has launched subsequent to being formed under the Energy Conservation Act in 2001. The areas covered are almost every sector of the economy, right from industries to appliances, to buildings, including awareness on energy conservation, national energy conservation awards, and so on and so forth. The next slide. This is some high level information that I'm just putting out to tell you what is there in the report. There are detailed information that is available in the report on each one of these areas. Suffice to say that the ministry and the bureau's PAT scheme has contributed to over two thirds of the energy savings during the year 2019-20. And the star labeling program has also resulted in enormous amount of savings of about 70 billion, US, I mean, billion units, leading to savings of about 40,000 crores in the year 2019-20. And the appliances, the efficiency levels are constantly being ramped up. And there are new appliances and devices that are coming into the SNL program. Next one. The energy efficiency services limited, which was the first company established by the government of India for implementing energy efficiency programs has set high targets and has blazed a real trailblazer for energy efficiency activities. Their national street lighting program and the Udala program have been such a success that they are being talked about successful programs globally in the energy efficiency context. The numbers are there for all of us to see, but what is important is that in terms of the customer, 
the prices for the LEDs and the national street lighting programs dropped so drastically that one couldn't really imagine that a single company for energy efficiency can bring this change in a period of four to five years. Energy efficiency services had a turnover of about 1,800 crores. And while ESL was established over 10 years ago, this entire turnover has happened in the last four to five years. And ESL has, of course, received enormous support from the World Bank ADB and euros from the Agency for uh, Development in France, as well as KFW, in addition to Indian sources to finance these energy efficiency projects. <laughs> ESL has also expanded their activities beyond India to UK, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. The next one. The FAME program is one other large program of the government of India, FAME 2 having an outlay of 10,000 crores. Although the offtake has been a little slow, there are a series of actions that are being taken by <coughs> the central government and the state governments to push the FAME program, which has so far resulted in over 3.25 lakh EVs that have been sold, and over 3,000 charging stations that have been sanctioned. And of course, in terms of petroleum fuel saved, it has saved almost over 500 lakh liters over the period up to January 2021, according to the dashboard of the Department of Heavy Industry. Next slide. <laughs> There are a number of international partners who have helped India in this process and journey. The agencies such as the ADB, AFD, JICA, the World Bank and KFW have provided loans for energy efficiency. They really believe that energy efficiency is a good financing that must be done. As you can see from the earlier slides, we've almost got loans to the tune of 500 million US. There are other international partners such as the FCDO in UK, the Global Environment Facility, GIZ, UNIDO, USAID and others who have played an important role in partnering with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency in terms of each program that they have identified, whether it is the labeling program, whether it is the Eco Nivas program or any other program in the MSME sector. All these international agencies have joined with the government institutions to take energy efficiency forward. The next one. We believe that there are some areas for further work that we must focus upon. Although we know for sure that the Bureau is working on some of these areas. Important areas are for the push for super efficient appliances. There is a market for high efficiency appliances and it needs to be explored. ECBC has been declared, but in terms of implementation, we need to accelerate the completion of this process. Data collection on end use energy consumption is a challenge that we are continuously trying to address. Net zero initiatives have been very much in the focus over the last five years in terms of whether it is corporates, or whether there are countries declaring their net zero targets. We started with electricity for all, we moved to lighting for all, and now we are focusing on thermal comfort for all. The next slide, please. As mentioned before, this report contains enormous information from mainly the government, bilateral and multilateral agencies, all of which are available in public domain, but they are available across several websites which one has to go through. And even within the website, you will have to go through five or six internal levels to find this information. But then there are several suggestions that have come forth for the next edition, which I would request all our attendees and the panel members to address and give their suggestions for. Should we include net zero initiatives in the public and private sectors? Can we include any information on end use energy consumption, whether it is NGOs who have done work or the NSSO? 
Is there information on star-related appliance sales that we can include? A number of Indian international philanthropic institutions in the last 15 years have made enormous contributions. Initiatives from NGOs who have played a key role, we need to see. These are, will be discussed in the next few sessions that we are going to have. The next session, I mean, the next slide, please. We wish to acknowledge that we've got enormous support from the BEE, ESL, and several international agencies. Special mention is made of GIZ, Unido, PHC, and SDC, who reviewed all the special materials and provided the written feedback. The, all the information is taken from public sources and referenced in great detail. We look forward to the feedback from all stakeholders in case there is any change just references that are not there please revert and we would be happy to give you any information that you would need the next slide thank you i will now stop here and hand over to Nitin. thanks Nitin. uh thank you dr bhaskar i mean this was uh exciting i think uh the suggestions what have been uh, put through and what he said you know energy efficiency is a good financing that needs to be done i think i'm the same person sold on that and i think uh, most of the people present here would definitely find a lot of uh, insights once they go to the report for our next uh, session uh, i'm gonna invite uh, melody from iaa to share her thoughts and inputs melody i'm just gonna share uh, the controls with you so you can share the presentation over to you well you're mute you may want to unmute yourself can you see the screen yet Yes, we can see the screen and hear you fine. Over to you. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and and thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Um, whilst you quite rightly celebrate this, uh, the publication of this really important report, and um, I would like to add my um, my my kind of comments that our thoughts are with you in this very difficult time, um, and hopefully things improve very quickly. Um, uh, and uh, we 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 start to be able to uh, work more closely together. Um, uh, so and India sees its way out of it, uh, this current these current problems along with the rest of the world. So um, I'm going to uh, take a, a a bit of a big picture view to start with in traditional IEA fashion, um, and hopefully explain why this this work that's being done in India is is so critically critical globally. So just just to start with. Um, we, um, you know, we, we, we're clearly all aware of the issue, the, the, the role that um, energy efficiency has to play in meeting our global climate goals. And I just wanted to remind everybody with this chart to show that with the current stated policies that governments around the world have in place, the blue line at the top of this chart, um, we, we, we don't, of course, get anywhere close to meeting uh, climate goals. And the IEA has a sustainable development scenario, which takes into account a well below two degrees um, climate outcome, but also has inbuilt uh, access to modern energy services for all, and also uh, appropriate levels of air pollution, um, but for all as well. So it's a, it's a combination of those, those two things. And energy efficiency is the biggest contributor to us being able to make that, that change from stated policies globally to, to that sustainable development scenario. But unfortunately, we're seeing a slowdown in the rate of energy efficiency progress. And um, clearly that's something that uh, we need to try and address. And hopefully the sort of work that AEEE the Energy Efficiency Services Limited, all the, the, the great and the good work that's been going on in India will help us to um, kind of redress this. But you might remember that when the Sustainable Development Goals were established um, some years ago, a, a rate of improvement, an annual rate of improvement of 
of 2% was, was discussed. And then because we weren't doing 2%, it was 2.6%. And then it became 3%. And unfortunately now, 3% um, isn't enough either because of this, this slowdown. So it's probably more like four. Anyway, we need to really redress this balance. And um, whilst the world is in a, in, a, in a difficult place at the moment, um, energy efficiency can be part of the, of the way out. So um, we've been tracking uh, sustainable recovery plans around the world and looking at the opportunities for job creation. Um, and one of the good pieces of news for energy efficiency is if you look at the green bars at the bottom of this chart, energy efficiency is the best place for governments to put their money uh, in sustainable recovery if they want to create long-term good quality local jobs. Um, so hopefully we can, um, uh, by, by presenting this message, we can convince governments that this is, this is a, you know, a helpful way out of the current situation. Um, so that's a kind of global picture. I just want to dig, bit in, dig, dig a bit into India. Um, and um, as we know, India has seen extraordinary successes in recent years in terms of its energy system connections to hundreds of millions of citizens, this huge investment boom in renewables, um, the rapid uptake of, of LEDs through the great work of uh, Energy Efficiency Services Limited, of course. Um, I would like to say that also um, another, um, we heard a bit more about PAT earlier, the, the Performance Achieved Trade Scheme. It is, it's one of the most interesting industrial energy efficiency policies that's used in the world, and it's being looked at and copied by many. So India has every, every right to feel extremely proud of these achievements and is genuinely influencing policy in other parts of the world. Um, clearly, COVID-19 has complicated the res resolution of, of, of other pressing problems. Um, there's the reliability issue, um, continued reliance on traditional biomass, um, air pollution. So um, we put this analysis together to, to have a look at how um, India's clean energy transition might, might play out. So going back to that traditional IEA curve we saw at the beginning, this is, this is an Indian version. So steps, the sustainable, uh, sorry, <laughs> the stated policy scenario is, is, is what India's government has declared as policies now. Um, the sustainable development scenario is, uh, as I described, takes into account air pollution access and, and um, also um, CO2 emissions. And here in uh, India, so renewables takes a bigger part of the load, but energy efficiency is still a hugely important factor in, in making this the necessary reductions happen and make, making them happen both quickly enough and more affordably. So without energy efficiency, this journey would cost so much more and probably be unachievable for most countries, not just India. So just, just having a look at how we break that, um, that down. Um, on the left hand of this chart, the 2019 bar, that's total final energy consumption in India in 2019. Um, if, if, not, if things were to continue as they are, then um, and, and GDP grows as, as expected. Um, we see we see this this growth, which would um, naturally mean if, if if there's a complete coupling of energy intensity and GDP, it would see this this huge uh, increase in energy consumption. But um, if we look at our uh, this, the step scenario, so the, the the stated policies from India, we can see that um, we you know it's not that bad the growth in demand needn't be that high with the, the, the policies as stated um so economic structure reduces uh, or, or would take up um a little bit more growth but energy efficiency actually um, then results in a reduction so industry has been separated here from other sectors because it's so important uh, in india in particular and also, of course, we've included uh, less traditional biomass here to show what we think energy demand could look like um, in 2040. But, but bearing in mind, like I said, this is using the, the current stated policies 
we need to do more than this in order to uh, achieve climate goals. Um, just having a quick look at what's driving this growth. So um, these charts are currently showing um, indicators for 2019 in terms of population, urban population in particular, because that's a major driver of energy consumption. Uh, residential floor, floor space, similarly. Uh, output of steel and cement and air conditioner ownership, which in India, of course, is currently quite modest. But um, in the stated policy scenario, we see these sorts of growth patterns happening. So this is what's driving that increase in energy demand. And this is what we need to apply efficiency to, to get that demand down to a level where we can help um, the globe meet its, its climate target. So just unpicking one of those elements, because of course there's a lot of talk about cooling energy efficiency, cooling demand in India. Um, so cooling demand is, uh, so current cooling demand is the, the 2019 bar at the left hand side of this chart. Um, with, with, with no um, action, you can see where this would go with the big yellow activity bar. Efficiency of cooling brings that down a bit and that takes us to the blue bar which represents the stated policy scenario. So that's as things are stated now. Um, in the uh, India outlook, uh, we created something called the India Vision case, which was um, a higher growth in GDP um, and more aggressive um, clean energy transitions. So if that were to happen with the higher growth in GDP, we would have more wealth, therefore more air conditioner ownership. But what we're trying to show here is that increase in activity through the increased GDP could be offset with even more increase in efficiency. So in effect, um, a large growth in GDP with a large growth in cooling service, but not the commensurate growth in um, energy demand. So these, these, these are the things that we, we believe to be possible. So just I just got a few summary points uh, on a couple of slides here. So just to reiterate how well India has done here. So um, India's avoided 15% energy use, 14% CO2 and, and uh, imports in fuels, oil, both oil and gas. So all of this has been of benefit, of course, to, to the economy. Um, so if India were to increase its energy efficiency ambition, we believe that um, India could save 190 billion a year in energy imports, mainly through coal, but also some oil and gas. And of course, avoid the generation of 875 terawatt hours of electricity per year, which avoids a large investment in the energy supply system. Um, and a, of course, a, a reduction in fuel consumption too. So they're benefits to the, to, to the supply system. And also we heard earlier about um, the, the issues with um, the distribution companies in India. And of course, investment in energy efficiency can you know, really significantly improve the financial health of the DISCOMs. Um, we have digitalization uh, as an opportunity to, to further help India's energy supply system. And um, so the India Smart, India Smart Grid Forum believe that demand side management programs could re reduce overall consumption by about 10%. So that's another reduction in investment that's, that, that's necessary. All these things being benefits of energy efficiency. In terms of additional opportunities, if um, India was to event, invest in an energy efficient recovery program, this is, this is some summary points of some work we've been doing with the Bureau. Um, but economies like India could deliver around 30 jobs per million invested, particularly in new and existing buildings. And as I said earlier, the, 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 the great thing about this is that they're good quality jobs, they're long term, they're local jobs. So really, really important. Um, some, you know, some, some kind of recovery plans end up creating a, a, a jobs boom, which which bursts so you know, people can't plan their careers about those things. But in terms of clean energy transitions, there, there are really long term possibilities here. Uh, and, 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 and the most, um, most uh, 
the best payback in terms of investment being through through energy efficiency. Um, so, of course, widespread adoption of building codes we've heard about earlier. Um, more savings available there, residential buildings in particular. So um, we also heard about appliances and the interest in super efficient appliances. So there's another, there's a, there's another opportunity here in um, uh, government investing actions to support replacement of old appliances, which could create jobs as well as energy savings, as well as improved energy services to people, to citizens alike. Um, and more um, investment in industrial energy efficiency could also deliver new jobs as well as the energy savings. The car industry, of course, is particularly popular in, uh, important sorry, in, in India, and so that that's also perhaps merits a, a focus of its, of its own. So in terms of overall conclusions, um, you know, India, of course, is you know better than I am. I do, sorry, that, that this is a very dynamic country and it's going through a dynamic phase. Um, in terms of the energy supply system, renewables is uh, uh, really um, transforming in India's electricity sector much faster than I think people might have imagined. But of course, the 24-7 reliability uh, is, is crucial. It's important to investment. You know, companies will not want to invest if they can't be sure of that um, guarantee of supply. And consumers, um, the government will, will lose the support of consumers if they also don't have that, that supply. Um, transport's a particularly big area that still needs a lot of attention. Um, it's, it's an opportunity to reduce uh, imports in fuel if, if, if transport becomes more efficient. Um, and um, the, the, the mitigating the environmental and energy security problems will require a, a wide range of um, efficient and clean technologies. But this is something also that India is extremely good at investing in, in, in R&D and innovating. Um, and so, you know, uh, the general conclusion is that India can meet the aspirations of citizens and the IEA is here to do whatever we can to help. Um, we very much keen to work with all of the energy efficiency um, agencies, departments, um, and um, you know, support groups to, to make sure that we can, can help in this kind of collaborative approach. Um, I think I'll leave it for there, but of course, you know, happy to answer any questions at any time. Thank you very much for the opportunity again to be with you today. Uh, thank you, Manny. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, I mean, like as I said, what you highlighted, some of the key points are very, very important. I mean, uh, we are seeing from the point of view of how much from India's uh, point of view, like we're consuming, I mean, like the trends, especially on the cooling side, I think uh, we really need to prioritize energy efficiency. I mean, like there is no other way around that especially considering the impact of cooling, transport, and other sectors combined together. Thanks a lot uh, for a very insightful presentation. Now, um, I would request uh, to invite uh, Dr. Dam from a GIZ to share uh, his inputs and thoughts. Uh, good morning, Dr. Dam in Germany. How are you doing today? Fine, fine. It's actually already afternoon. And right, namaste right. to everyone and all the 100 participants. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Mr. Bart, for introducing and Dr. Natarayan for presenting us the main contents of the study, but I encourage everyone to read it in detail because it's a great study and it's so important. And it's such a nice overview about all the activities you're doing in India and in the field of energy efficiency. Thank you for, so much for inviting me. I'm really pleased and honored to be uh, on this, let's say, panel among these eminent important institutions like IEA and Bureau of Energy Efficiency, who is the main driver of energy efficiency in India. And we learned already a lot from Mrs. Slate why it's so important. Let me review it a little bit with a German perspective as well. We just had the Biden summit, and we are all working jointly, I guess, on uh, getting to a good COP in Glasgow in November. Everyone is committed to achieve Paris target of less than two degrees Celsius. 
which implies a basically a fast decarbonizing of any significant economy on earth, including India. There are so many pledges around to get to zero calm by mid-century. And let's let me take the main emitters. China 260, US and Europe 250, Germany just prepawned that day to 2045, which is less than 24 years left. And Germany committed to a 65% reduction of CO2 emission based on 2030, aligned with the EU goals of 55%. So this is, um, and keeping in mind that we barely achieved 40% by 2020 based on, 20, on 1990. So I'm always fan of back of the envelope calculation. So 65 minus 40% brings it to 25 divided by 10 is 2.5. So this is an annual reduction. But keep in mind this 2.5% linear is based on the 1990 goals. So if you compare this to the existing already achieved limits, it's more than 4%. And if you would go on this linear line and calculate now the required reduction between 29 and 30, you're up to 7%. Annual reduction in comparison to the previous year. This is dramatic. And this is true for all responsible countries. So we are talking of a reduction of energy, of uh, let's say CO2 emissions by four to 7% every year based on the previous year. How can this be achieved? Well, you all know about the Indian goal of 450 gigawatt renewables by 2030. A great ambitious goal. But it's only sufficient to achieve the increased electricity demand increase uh, if you project it with an annual increase of about 3%. But very many in India, including CEA, expect something between 5 to 7% of electricity growth, which would be doubling that amount. And even if you project 5 to 7% electricity growth, nothing is in there which would reduce the existing reduction of coal power, nor any major sector transition, uh, be it to electrify the entire transport sector, uh, shifting industry sector to zero carbon, which would include a lot of uh, electrification or moving to hydrogen. So India might need far more than, not far, 450, but far more than 1000 gigawatt of renewable by 2030 only, if one would go that path, as we all agreed via Paris. These are dramatic numbers and shows the dramatic changes to come. And despite solar has been become fairly cheap, obviously there remain quite some problems. Uh, the most important one might be that there is no solar during night. The ramp rates are an issue. One could solve this with storage, for example, from batteries, but that would increase the demand for IE even further. And as Mrs. Slade already pointed out, there's only one other better and far economic solution, energy efficiency, and in the future, energy demand shift. The electricity consumption during solar times will become, let's say, okay and fairly cheap but quite costly during all other hours. So we need to do both, reduce the energy demand and shift it to the solar times. Germany puts energy efficiency first for the energy transition. And as Mr. Slade pointed out, energy efficiency is a prime and most important issue for the energy transition and the enabler for the required decarbonization. And as she pointed out, it's so economically and beneficial to the economy, job creation, and also reducing the import bills of India as well. So thank you 
AEEE to conduct the study and Dr. Natayan and your team. I would suggest to repeat this study regularly, for example, every two or three years. I believe that um, all the mentioned institution will come up with a lot of new programs during that time to achieve the outlined ambitious goals I mentioned. And therefore they have to work together and they might need to involve even further institutions. Let me take, for example, the steel ministry or cement. So I think these major industry sectors have to be included too. Um, I'm afraid that, as Mrs. Slade pointed out, um, with the enormous ambitions and activities requested, even the SDC scenario she presented, we will not have a major CO2 reduction in India. But we need to go there. So on top of what she has mentioned, let's say the way we have to go is far more ambitious and far more, let's say, challenging. And it's so much to do, and we have to increase and um, do far more activities, projects, program, reducing all those things and, and requirements. It's a long way to go, very cumbersome. It's really worthwhile. It really pays off. Uh, it's what we call green recovery. And we as GIZ are more than happy to further support the key institutions on that way, especially and including Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Thank you so much. And looking forward to the interaction and discussion. Danja Watt. Thank you, uh, Mr. D Dr. Dam, uh, uh, for this uh, insights, what you shared. And as I said, EE has to be the enabler. I, the second that I think like most of the people present here would uh, second the thought. I mean, if India has to move forward um, and as, I mean, the approach Germany is taking like energy efficiency first. I think that is one of the ways we have to go ahead to. Thanks for your inputs and thank you for your time. Now, um, I would uh, like to request uh, Secretary BEE, uh, Mr. R.K. Rai, to uh, come forward and formally uh, launch this report. Uh, Mr. R.K. Rai, I would be happy to have you on over here. Adam, how are you? Fine, fine. Pleasure to see you. Yeah. How are you? Good. Mr. Secretary, over to you. Uh, okay. Uh, I think you are, you are doing the formal launch, so I think uh, you will move in a video form or thereafter I will take it up here. Right. Uh, then, uh, yeah, yeah I, I can I can just uh, speak a few words. I think yes, your, yes, your yes. formal your formal launch is over. I think no? Right, over yes, to you. Sir. Okay, please go okay. ahead. Thank over you. to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, dear Dr. Dam. Uh, nice to see you always. Uh, looking charming face, uh, Melanie and uh, Dr. Satish, Dr. Bhaskar. Uh, Nitin and uh, my dear friends. Uh, working with A Triple or GIZ or EA has been always a pleasure for B. We always used to learn a lot from all our partners uh, in all the fields. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to compliment the A Triple and the team under the leadership of uh, Dr. Bhaskar for bringing out such a nice uh, and useful report. Uh, Dr. Bhatt has uh, had I had to go through it, but in the morning I tried to go through the report which I asked Mr. Bhaskar to share with me and I found it quite useful. A lot of uh, things have been covered and a lot needs to be further added, which we, we can uh, bring in the next issue, which has been uh, uh, explained by Bhaskar uh, ji that in the next issue we are going to bring more input from the industry and other players because uh, government initiatives are okay on the one side, but, but unless until we have the input or views from the industry, any report is not uh, that much useful. We should have a, there also. Uh, a lot of uh, learned people here, I know I don't need to explain the what is the India's commitment to the NDC. But yes, what we have done so far 
has been acknowledged by the various international uh, communities. Uh, as far as the various organization uh, doing energy efficiency in India is concerned, there are various uh, multilateral organization, national, regional, in the uh, public sector as well as private sector. Even from my previous organization, I was working with Ministry of MSME. There also we implemented a few schemes like APTEC or zero effect, zero defect. But yes, there has not been any formal effort to bring these all uh, initiative and activities on a one platform where the, all the stakeholders can go through it, whether it is from the government side or from the private side. This report will be really useful for the government agencies also while carving out our various programs and policies so as to create a synergy within the organization, within various ministries and departments to carve out our various policies which are going to implement in the years to come. And for the industry, not only it will be useful for them to understand what role they are going to play in meeting the India's uh, commitment to the NDC, but also they can uh, have the idea that from which program or scheme they can take the uh, initiatives and get the benefit. I compliment uh, once again the AEEE for taking out this initiative. We are there, we are always there and we will be there to support them in their various initiatives. Uh, I thank uh, AEEE once again for giving me the opportunity to speak to the learned uh, audience as well as the panelists here at the moment. And uh, we, we are there to uh, whatever commitment are there from our side, whether we're well working with AEEE or GIG or IEA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rai. So now I will uh, uh, request Dr. Bhaskar to lead forward the discussion uh, about the report and uh, energy efficiency space. Dr. Bhaskar, over to you. Thank you uh, so much, Nitin. Uh, I would want to request our panelists uh, to give a couple of quick responses to the new areas for inclusion in the next edition of the report. So Nitin, if you could just open the PPT and put that slide where we talk of next edition suggestions. Sure. Yeah. Give me one moment, please. Yes, this is the one. Uh, can I uh, request uh, Melanie Slate to go first and then Dr. Dam and then uh, uh, Mr. Upendra and then Dr. Rai? Thank you. These are some suggestions that have come forward. So it is up to you to tell us how relevant these are. But if you think we should add anything that is not here, please feel free to say so. Thank you. Go ahead, Melanie. Great, thank you very much. These are all all really important initiatives, I think. Um, I'll add one and then I'll dig into one a bit more deeply, if I may. So um, we're seeing great gains um, through digitalization of the energy system, but 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 thinking about energy, people don't think about energy efficiency in that context quite as much as we think they should. So um, um, Dr. Dam talked about the the issue with supply and demand and the, the lack of matching of the times when energy is available and when it's being used. You know, digitalization can help us an awful lot here in, in trying to bring these these uh, ma ma matching those those to the, together, particularly in the urban environment. So that's something I'd say um, uh, could be could be more of a focus. It's something that the IA is doing a lot of work on now, and we'd be very happy to share experiences on. But the one thing I wanted to dig into a bit more deeply is um, energy efficient appliances. <clears throat> and just to say that um, the UK government, as president of COP26, is, uh, has launched what is being called a call to action on um, product energy efficiency, so appliance energy efficiency, focusing on electric motors, on lighting, refrigeration and air conditioners, and asking governments to come together to support an initiative which aims to double the efficiency of these appliances um, by 2030, the, the ones being sold by 2030. 
And so, um, you know, we clearly really um, uh, appreciate uh, India's support through that process too. And also would be very keen to talk to AEEE about the technical details that underlie it, because understanding what's a, a plausible roadmap for India would be really helpful in, in that context. The only other thing I'd say about the star of rated appliances in, in the work we've done in India in the past, I think it's really important to, to get to the, the states, the provinces, to the lo very local manufacturers, the local brands, and find ways of involved, making sure that the local brands are involved as well as the, the national and multinational brands. Because you know, we hear that traditionally people will buy products of the same brand that their mother bought, in households, if I may say. And so, you know, there's a lot of tradition there. So making sure that the local brands have access to technology and can produce efficient appliances is, is going to be really, really important to India. And I'll stop there. To you, Dr. Dan. Thank you. So um, compliment to the suggestions for the next edition, compliments to what Melanie Slate mentioned. Just to add a few things, um, one would be I would love to have an overview about the goals for energy efficiency from the various ministries and states. And uh, there might not be any as of now, but like Ministry of Steel, I mentioned there might come up some in the near future. So just to have that overview and um, have a kind of checking who is moving in that area would be really great. Second thing, as I mentioned, uh, demand shift, I think is very important and to add to this um, what kind of programs and regulatory things are already on or are expected to come in regards to supplying and, and uh, helping demand shift would be helpful. Um, furthermore, financing is an issue. So if there would be an overview, where are subsidies available? Where would be, let's say, finance programs coming up or being, let's say, talked about would be really helpful. And last, um, if you would have, let's say, unlimited resources, obviously such a nice overview would be splendid to be online and to be updated on a regular basis, not only to have a, every two years publication or something like this, but uh, if it would be even linked via B website so that anyone in India would have an immediate overview who is working on what, what is the current status, but obviously this is a dream and would require quite some resources. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Upendra, is he still there or he is left? I think uh, Nitin, he is left, right? Let no? me just cross check once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he has just left. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, may I request uh, Mr. Rai from the Bureau to give your suggestion, sir? And also in terms of how we can work together with the BEE and through the BEE to reach out to several other national and international partners on this important initiative. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Bhaskar, the way we started the State Energy of Efficiency Index and we make it a partner initiative of AEEE and B, in the right. same line, we can take this initiative yes. and we can, from our side, we can write to various ministries, departments, or, or various multilateral or other organizations that we would like to work on this direction because ultimately this is going to help the country to ultimately achieve whatever various goals are to various organizations. Uh, I totally echo the things that uh, the energy the session what have been made by our speaker. It is always good to be at the end because at that time you don't have much to say that what to be added. But yes, uh, if you can add one area, the SMEs because SMEs are taking around 29 to 30 percent right. of energy uh, of uh, industry side. So we have taken a various initiative with GIG, GIG in. Uh, we are going to launch another program in steel and paper industry. So uh, uh, we also work with Unido and World Bank, and uh, we are working on cluster approach. So if th those things can also be included in that next report because SME can be an important initiative. And rightly said by the earlier speaker that the building is going to be very, very important and ECBC rollout in various 
states are very important though some states are taking lead so we are going to as uh, discussed in our we in the last meeting we are going to make this ecbc very important component of a state energy efficiency index that how they are implementing how they are creating an infrastructure because building is going to be another area so that can be given more emphasis on the next edition also yes sir uh, thank you so much for these uh, suggestions uh, dear panelists and uh, one thing that we did want to to mention and we have discussed internally uh, mr rai is that uh, the be collects a lot of information on the star rating of appliances and so on because all the appliance manufacturers have to pay a fee to the be for the appliances when they are putting the labels on the appliances similarly the be also collects a lot of information from the pat industries and therefore if there was some way we could remove the names of these manufacturers or industries and if we were to analyze some of this information it would indeed be very very useful as an example let me mention that the be's impact assessment report for 2019 20 did give star appliances you know 1 to 5 for various appliances over the last 2 years it shows very interestingly which appliances the ratings are going up which appliances the sales of lower ratings are going up you know this is something that the industry would want to know number one number two researchers like atripli and others would want to tell people hey why is this happening why are you guys buying two star rated appliances you know so there we don't care who is manufacturing it need not be you know whirlpool or samsung or whatever but this information there is available similarly the msme uh, database also has a lot of information so there is a need sir for opening up this information removing all the confidential names and other such details and i think it would be important for us to work on this this is where i would like to request any ex similar experiences from the the iea countries or germany where such information that is available from the private sector is put out by any agency for energy efficiency can i request melni and uh, dr winfred to to respond so maybe on a, on appliances um saska um most countries have um a public version of their databases where um can, because it's being used by consumers to search for efficiency um and so mm -hmm. in most countries that's that's accessible so uh, i don't know how it works in india because of course there's the app for the star labeling program for people to be able mm -hmm. to buy efficient things so i don't know why that data isn't accessible um but the one thing i would say in terms of when you um if you take the names off it something we found really important yes. to analysis for the country right. to know huh? whether it's locally produced or whether it's imported it doesn't matter who buy but that distinction's really important because most governments are not prepared to have more stringent programs if they think it's going to mm -hmm. impact so much on local manufacturers so we need to be able to see that division even if we don't care the net, what the name is so that's one thing that um uh, we do get uh, from other countries um quite often um in terms of um other forms of data there there are some countries that are really have digitalized everything and are really open and other countries where you still can't find anything but um i come from the uk and i can go to a map and i can find out what the energy consumption of the primary school in my village is and there's only 50 children there huh? but you know all of that okay. data is 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 digitalized right. gis enable and 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 you can it, it's regarded as a as a right of a citizen to be able to, to find that sort of thing so mm. you know, there are different scales but but right. i think what you're suggesting in terms of getting um 
at least some of it available uh, to researchers is really, really important. It will help us all give better policy advice if we can have access to that sort of information. And just, just on the, on the. Um, Thank you, Dr. Dan. Can I just? Yeah. Before, Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Just one point, because Dr. Dan mentioned this as well. You know, if you combine digitalization with um, mm -hmm. knowing where a building is, say and being able to predict what its energy demand will be, then you can match supply to that building. So you, you, you do need a level right. of, uh, of data um, to help you with mm -hmm. that overall management process and help you to minimize the costs because um, otherwise we can't make full use of those, particularly those, those renewable resources that are available to us. Right, yes. Thank you, Dr. Dam. Your comments? Well, just full support, what has been said. <laughs> Thank you uh, uh, so much. Uh, uh, there are a Dr. few Dr. items Dr. that we have. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Rai, yeah. I forgot. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can I? Uh, uh, so far, though, we have not shared, shared this, uh, the information uh, made it public. But as far as if, if we if we are not going to provide any specific industry specific information, if it is a general way, like five, uh, right. five star inverter ACs, hmm. how many sold in which state, those data hmm. I think can be shared right. and can be provided. Exactly. I don't think that is going hmm. to be any issue. S similarly, in case of pet hmm. industries, uh, we are not there to we are not as per the act, we're not supposed to provide the specific industry specific hmm. information. But yes, we can provide information uh, about a sector steel industry sector this has been the yes. trend or uh, this has been the ways and means right uh, in the suggestions there are a couple of items that are going beyond the government and information areas i just like to have your thoughts i know it's going to be a challenge to get the information i'm talking of the last two items indian and international philanthropic institutions in the last 10 years in India, a large number of these international philanthropic institutions have come in and they are supporting uh, a range of initiatives on energy efficiency, transition, pollution, etc. Similarly, there are a number of think tanks, leading NGOs. I don't know how to define a leading NGO, but they have provided important inputs to all the government institutions and they work in partnership with international institutions. We just thought we would, uh, you know, see how best we can include some of them because they will have the same challenges of providing information similar to the government because there are several reports that are in the pipeline, there are reports that are not yet closed and so on. And therefore, this is going to be a challenge. Now, just wanted to have your thoughts on how relevant and impactful would including these two items be in the next uh, report. Uh, Melanie? Well, I think Dr. Dam's idea of an online resource probably uh, covers this best because those things are quite fast moving. And as you say, you know, you only see the published version. You don't know what the planning is. You don't know what's in train. So if you could collaborate with, um, and we've been asked to do this in other countries, by the way. So if you collaborate with um, um, the, the the bureau say to to have a database of initiatives and there's just a small mm -hmm. paragraph which right. says that um, this organization is working on this it doesn't need to reveal a lot of detail but then it can right. signpost to exactly. back to the organization you've got then you know people often use this term one-stop shop but you've got you've got somewhere where anybody can see what's going on and um whilst as, as dr dam said the investment in an online version you know can be uh, a big thing it's really really important in this age because otherwise there's no way we can all keep up with what's going on right dr baskar thank you uh, dr. Uh, yeah dr baskar i have to leave yes, at 4:15 uh, so if there no is problem, any very no from uh, audience then we can uh, uh, respond to that yeah yeah uh, sorry nitin are there sorry any specific questions uh, for uh, mr rai 
No, there aren't specific questions. Uh, there were a few which I've shared with you in the chat box. I mean, like there was more than questions. There were suggestions okay. uh, similar to what we have been discussing. So okay. probably uh, if you can have a look at those. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rai, at the moment, I don't think there is any major specific questions. So therefore, uh, please feel free to continue to your engagement at 4.15. Thank you. And Sorry, before I you to, go, could you I just give make your... a presentation at 4.15, so that's why I thought that. No, no, no problem. No problem, sir. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. I will keep in touch with you sure. uh, later next sure. week on the next action. Sure. Most welcome. Thank right. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Nitin, uh, if you could just uh, go over what has been the suggestions that have come out uh, for the benefit of our panelists and for the other uh, attendees. Sure. Just give me a moment, please. Yes. So, uh, one of the suggestions was uh, there has to be a uh, uh, a larger view from the funders perspective they, there is a request for an year by year data for sale of energy efficient appliances that what we discussed about ecbc implementation they need data around that and the financial flows around that i mean like how it's happening that's a recommendation which has been uh, ex, uh, which people are requesting for uh, also uh, 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 one of the uh, one of the attendees have responded they would want to read more about the path schemes uh, uh, which would which we have done because they feel you know from the ground uh, work which has been happening there's a lot been happening but somehow you know like there's more need to be done uh, on this line so these are a couple of uh, inputs what we have received uh, from the panelists from the, uh, from the people attending the session okay all right uh, then in which case, I think uh, I would now then uh, wrap up uh, and give a formal uh, uh, vote of thanks. Uh, I do want to firstly thank uh, all the government agencies, institutions, and the international agencies for having worked with AEEE to provide all the information and then to be able to review the information which was done in the case of DIZ, STC, UNIDO, and a couple of others, and provided the written feedback. That was indeed very, very helpful. Also, uh, we do believe that we will work more closely with international institutions such as the IEA to see that we are able to maybe take some lessons from some of the other countries and then put it in the next year's edition of the report as success stories that India can probably uh, adopt. I do also want to place on record our thanks to the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, to DGB for writing the foreword to the report, uh, to Secretary B and to the team at B who reviewed the report and made sure that all the information was correct and up to date. Uh, particularly Arijit and Sumit uh, were two people with whom I have worked closely on this report at the Bureau. Uh, I do also want to thank uh, the people at the international institutions, including the World Bank and ADP, as well as AFD and JICA for all the information they have provided, not only through their websites, but also through other communications that we've had uh, with them. Finally, I believe uh, I would be, uh, you know, uh, missing in my duty if I didn't thank my entire team at AEEE, uh, particularly the research staff and the communication staff who have put in so much effort to, to not only prepare the report, design the report, edit the report, and finally work on this launch event. It has been a great team effort working with the team and I certainly want to thank everyone, including the senior management of AEEE, Mr. Upendra, Dr. Satish, and the senior people at AEEE. <laughs> Sorry. And therefore, let me bring this uh, event to a close, uh, thanking you all once again and wishing that all of you and your family stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.